This video covers the basics of scripting and the script object. There's many reasons why you might want to add some scripting logic to your processing. Scripting can be used for things like setting or testing values, performing loop processing, and many other actions that help you extend the standard capabilities of any object and perform real-time decision making. Think of scripting as an atomic automation control language that allows each user to extend the capabilities of the solution to meet their specific needs. Scripting logic can be included in any object as part of the process phase. This logic can also be stored in an object designated strictly for that purpose called the script object. You can create a script object to store a set of common logic that can be used repeatedly throughout the product. When the object is executed, this additional logic will be processed by the script interpreter on the AA server. It never executes on the agents. You'll find that the principles are consistent with other scripting languages like Shell. Here, we introduce some of the key concepts of the syntax. The syntax is consistent with basic programming. It relies on statements comprised of commands, functions, and variables. When working with objects like jobs or workflows, automation scripts can be combined with scripting languages available with the system or application. You can design a script that has some AA elements and some DOS. From a technical perspective, the atomic script is interpreted first, then the other code. You can tell them apart by the fact that non-proprietary code appears in brown, and many users tend to write atomic script in uppercase, even though ultimately it is case insensitive. Note that if you define a script object, these objects will only support atomic automation scripting. The statement is the basic unit of code and often executes a command. Statements always start with a colon symbol. The working part of the statement, the command, will always appear in blue as long as it is properly formatted. You can use the underscore symbol as a continuation character. The next line should start with a colon as well. For variables, the rules are simple. Variables always start with the ampersand symbol. When formatted, they appear in purple and have no limit in length. All alphabetical characters and numbers are accepted. Certain special characters are also accepted, and we have listed them here. The second character after the ampersand cannot be a number. Accented characters are not accepted. Finally, variable names are not case sensitive and can take a variety of formats, which we'll show in some examples later. Unless there are system wide variables, Variables are specific to their context. In other words, the objects where they are used. You can have two variables with the exact same name, so long as they are used in different objects. One of the best practices for variables is the use of the hash symbol at the end of the variable name. This is used as a delimiter because AA is unable to differentiate two variables with the same starting letters. So we use hash to signal the end of the variable name. In our example, the top situation is forbidden because the first letters of the variables are the same. The use of the hash delimiter at the end allows AA to differentiate the two variables. Functions allow us to manipulate data in the system, generally for the purposes of retrieving values. Functions are processed and then the output of that process is usually stored in a variable. Functions appear in red and will be followed by arguments and parentheses. You can only have one function per line. In our statement, we use a simple combination of a set command, a variable called ampersand var hash, and the sysTime function. This will store the current system time in the variable. We return to variables for a minute and consider variable formats. The first variable format is the literal, basically a hard-coded value in quotes, either single or double. It can be a text string. Further, we have already seen that it is possible to set a variable using a function, like sysdate and sysTime with arguments. When in doubt regarding the arguments, we recommend using the code completion function by hitting control space on the keyboard, which displays possible options. We can of course reference another variable as a value. We can concatenate and mix and match. Using a combination of variables and strings, you can produce almost any results you need. Comments are formatted with an exclamation mark at the beginning and appear in green. Anything you type in a comment is interpreted as doing nothing.
Let's provide a few examples for script implementations. We can set a variable using the sysdate function and then output the contents. The sysdate function can use any number of arguments for the date formats. The print command outputs the value to the activation reports. There are various ways of inserting pauses into your scripts. The first is the wait command, which takes a parameter in seconds. Remember that any scripts will be interpreted before any OS or application batch code is submitted. Therefore, if you insert a wait, the process is technically not submitted. It waits for the given number of seconds. In other words, it stalls processing on the server, and your task will take the generating status. Note that for Windows agents, you can also rely on a standard sleep command called UCBTX, available in the installation package in the agent windows example directory. You can copy the example directory in your agent directory and use the command with the dash w parameter in seconds. This is the exact equivalent of the Unix sleep command. We can execute objects with the activate uc object function. The set command sets a variable to the activate function and captures the task run ID. As an argument to the function, you indicate the name of the object you wish to execute. We start by opening the process assembly perspective, which is the environment in which configuration design is done. We create a folder for the script objects to keep our environments organized and tidy, and then create the objects to which we add a title, which is a description, Something we recommend since it helps searching and finding objects. We enter our code here. We set a variable called date hash to the system date with the sysdate function and the date formats. Our statement starts with a colon and the set command in blue. This is the variable date hash. Remember that all variables start with the ampersand symbol and appear in the purple color. Note that scripting offers tooltips. You can also right click on any syntax item and use the search and help function. This will take you straight to the support documentation page with a technical description and any arguments for that item. This is the sysdate function in red, which calculates the system dates. So we are setting our variable to the date defined by the AE server system. Finally, the sysdate requires the formats which we have entered. The next statement contains a print command, which will send the contents of the variable to the activation reports. We can either enter the variable, or we can use the completion tools by hitting control space. User declared variables are found at the bottom of the list. We select our variable, then save and execute. This is the activation report, which shows the system date, which is the result of our print commands. This would be accessible through the execution report as well. We close this request and return to our script object and try something else. We will delete and replace the existing syntax. We begin by entering a comment identified by the exclamation point and the green color. This statement sets the value of var hash to a function called activate uc object with a parameter which is an executable object. The object we execute is a jobs object. By printing the variable, we're sending the run ID to the activation reports. We can save the script object, execute it, 
and we'll monitor the execution of our jobs objects in the process monitoring perspective. Here we have output the run ID of the activate UC object function. Variables can be made available to an entire context of execution, for example by ways of the workflow objects. You can define variables for an entire workflow and then allow variables in the child tasks to inherit the values. When the workflow executes, those values will be available to all of its component parts. While we will not demo this, it's important that you're aware of this capability. There's several ways to do this. One of them involves defining variables in the Variables and Prompts page of the workflow. However, this is out of scope. The method we focus on is the pset command. pset works just like sets, except it propagates variable values to the entire context of the objects. Here, we have a workflow and three jobs. In the first gray job, we use pset to define the variables and associated values. We're then able to retrieve those, not only in the other two jobs using the print commands in their process page, but also in the workflow's process page as well. 